While everyone was shooting fireworks and partying for July 4th, I decided to stay inside and watch Stranger Things Season 3. I totally, 100%, did not feel like a complete loser. Hey everyone, it's Jason from EskimoTV.net. Stranger Things Season 3 is streaming on Netflix, and it is the best thing I've seen all year long. The Duffer Brothers once again prove themselves to be masters at building so much depth to characters that we love, and even some new characters. There's 13 leads this season, and I love every single one of them. They each have different nuances, different characteristics that make them unique and extremely likable. If you're eager for the series to start off with heavy, upside-down sci-fi suspense, you might be a little disappointed because the first few episodes are mainly focusing on characters. Hopper does not like Mike because he spends all his time with Eleven. He feels like they should have boundaries. We see relationship problems between Mike and Elle. Nancy and Jonathan are dealing with work-related problems and being maltreated by their co-workers working at the local newspaper called the Hawkins Post. Dustin has just got back from camp and claims to have a new girlfriend named Susie that no one believes is real. Steve Harrington is working at a new ice cream shop with this co-worker Robin. There's a lot of setup with the characters and that did not bother me whatsoever because I love these characters. The first three or four episodes, you may be a little underwhelmed by the level of problems that are being dealt with. I felt like these first few episodes episodes were really good, but I have heard the complaint that it is slow, and I disagree. They communicate a lot that I thought was interesting and really fast. We have 13 main characters at this point, and they needed to give each one an adequate enough screen time so you can see how they've changed since the last season. I defend the decision for the Duffer Brothers to spend so much time on the characters because that is why the show is so good. Stranger Things always shows our characters doing things we can relate to, and it is when it does that that the characters feel very real and extremely fleshed out. There are several sci-fi movies and TV shows that can often get lost in the sci-fi and they forget about building good characters, but Stranger Things keeps the characters a priority and I love what they do with them. Due to the large cast that has grown since its first season, the Duffer Brothers strategically split our group up. For the majority of the show, Mike, Lucas, Will, Max, and Eleven are trying to figure out how to stop the giant spider-looking creature that's called the Mind Flare from returning. Dustin, Steve, a new character named Robin, and Lucas's sister Erica are trying to decrypt a Russian message that leads them to uncover a conspiracy that coincidentally connects to the main plot. Joyce is grieving the loss of her previous love, Bob. As I mentioned, Hopper's trying to figure out how to be a good dad, and I liked how concerned he was because it really showed how good of a father figure he is. Him and Joyce investigate a really weird situation involving some magnets. Nancy and Jonathan are investigating a series of rats that are acting really peculiar. While trying to get the story published, they face oppression from their co-workers, who all think it's a really silly story. The Starcourt Mall was easily the best looking location. It looks gorgeous and truly feels like a mall that existed in the 80s. You not only had really old stores, but you had older logos for fast food restaurants and I absolutely loved it. I am now going to get into major plot spoilers, and so this is your official spoiler warning. The funniest joke made this season, and maybe in the entire show, is after we find out that Dustin's girlfriend Susie is real. In order to get information that will allow Hopper to open a very important safe that will save the lives of everyone we love, Susie forces Dustin to do this. Look at what you see in her face. The mirror of your dream. Make believe I'm everywhere. Give it in the light. Written on the pages is the answer to a never ending story.
there's literally a monster about to destroy their friends and when Susie requests that Dustin do this, I was a bit annoyed for just a little bit, but once the synth music comes in and they both start singing, I died laughing. Whoever pitched this idea, 10 out of 10, I loved it 200%. Stranger Things does a great job at subverting our expectations. From episode one, Susie, do you copy? We are left to wonder if Dustin's girlfriend is real. In the last episodes, it turns out that she is real. I thought it was hilarious that Susie really did exist since Everyone, including myself, thought that maybe she was fake. I actually thought Dustin and Erica might have became interested in each other, but I was clearly wrong. Another example of the show subverting our expectations is when we learn that Robin is attracted to women. I was really surprised and at the same time sad for Steve Harrington, who grew close to Robin this season. I think we all really wanted to see them get together. In fact, if any character was going to say that they were gay, I thought it would be Will Byers, who is upset that Mike and Lucas are so interested in girls. He just wants to play D&D with his buddies like the good old days. Mike snaps at him saying, it's not my fault you don't like girls, Will actually doesn't defend himself, and it could just be that he hasn't reached the point where he is interested in girls like his friends, or it could be that the Duffer brothers are hinting that season 4 may explore this sexuality side of Will. Even though I'm sad for Steve Harrington not getting with Robin, I'm glad that the Duffer brothers chose to do this because it feels like real life. Sometimes someone that you really like, you find out later on is actually not interested in you or they only see you as a friend and had everyone in this season found a love romantic partner the show wouldn't feel very real and it would actually feel very contrived and not natural the fact that Steve has yet to find his happy ending he's still on the search makes him feel like a very real character in addition I hope Robin can find someone that she really likes next season I love the creative idea to have Lucas blast fireworks towards the Mind Flare. That's something that is specific to the July 4th holiday and the release time of this particular season. It was such a unique way to battle against a monster. How many other shows or movies do you know have fireworks being used as a weapon? This form of attack was original and it was really beautiful to look at as you saw the fireworks explode. Eleven loses her powers when she uses a ton of energy to force a piece of the mind flare that is trapped in self inside of her leg. This moment created lots of tension because Elle has been the trump card helping out a ton this season. Particularly, I liked when she helps trap Billy inside the sauna. That actually reminded me of a scene from an old X-Files video game I played for the PS1. I also like when she goes psycho and uses her powers to rip pieces of the Mind Flare apart. Having Elle lose her powers was a smart decision because it made the end unpredictable as we all would have thought that Elle would be used to finish off the antagonist. The biggest spoiler I want to discuss is Hopper's sacrifice. His death was entirely unexpected. It was shocking, it was devastating. I like how his sacrifice is what ultimately saves our group, because after Elle loses her powers, I did not have any idea what would finish off the Mind Flare. As cute as the fireworks were to weaken the monster, we knew that wasn't going to defeat the creature ultimately, that would have been too easy. A theory I had early on was that maybe that the characters we met last season who also had powers similar to Eleven would show up and help overthrow the monster. But I'm actually glad that that did not happen because there would have been no emotional impact with that choice. I think the screenplay made the best decision possible regarding the ending. There have been some people angry with Susie saying Hopper would have had more time to get back to Joyce 
Had she not requested Dustin sing the never-ending story theme song, that's debatable, but I can understand everyone's frustrations. I'm sure Hopper would be gone, song or no song, as this is what the showrunners wanted moving forward. I love that Joyce decides to adopt the Levin as it is in her motherly character to do that. When Elle is reading the letter that Hopper had written to talk to her, I lost it. It was so sad. I just kept screaming at the screen. It was crazy. However, I would bet money that Hopper is not dead because in the end credit scene, a security guard says, not the American. And this whole series, Hopper was referred to by them as the American. I can't imagine anyone else being behind the door. And Stranger Things is very intentional with their script. And for that line to be said and never be addressed again in the future wouldn't really make any sense. And I have no idea who else could be behind that door. Billy, but we all saw him die. And I think if they're going to bring anyone back... Hopper just makes the most sense. I think next season, this is just a prediction, I think next season will start a year after these events and I predict Joyce will have moved on, potentially have found someone else that she likes. When it is discovered that Hopper is alive, this could create some tension filled conflict. I also think we're going to dive more into Mike and Elle who are probably going to be dealing with long distance relationship issues. I also think this next season may be released around Thanksgiving time, not this year, but potentially next year, uh, since that's when Mike says him and Eleven will for sure see each other again. I really love this season. I felt like the characters grew and that the plot was very creative and there was a lot of expectations that were subverted and a lot of surprises that I think made this season extremely exciting. I'm going to give Stranger Things Season 3 an A+. Let me know what you think about Stranger Things Season 3 in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this review, you can find more at EskimoTV.net. Be sure to like, share this video with your friends, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you'll get notified on the latest Icy and Chili Eskimo TV reviews.